Akiyam, this is Quan coming through once again with another little video, and I just wanted to cover or further cover this whole Breonna Taylor um, case, this incident, um, and just to provide facts and context, and as well as the understanding of, like I said, what why these things occur, and why the agenda is being pushed from the left wing liberal media. Um, am I saying that Breonna Taylor was a victim? Yes, she was a victim. But at the end of the day, she wasn't an innocent victim. You know what I mean? She was a victim, but she wasn't innocent. And when do, what do I mean when I say that? She was liable to go down based off of what took place in regards to her, you know, dealing with another man known as Jamarcus Russell before she got with the man known as Kenneth Walker. She was aiding in drug tra trafficking with the brother Jamarcus Russell. Now, Breonna Taylor was killed because of her current boyfriend. Breonna Taylor wasn't killed because of what she'd done. She was killed because of her current boyfriend, and nobody's coming at him. Everybody coming at the police that fired the shot after he was shot at. If you're a police and you get shot, what the hell are you going to do? Not shoot back? It's ridiculous, man. But she was killed because of him. She was killed because of the boyfriend. But nobody's talking about that. Everybody want to talk about the police because that's the easy thing to talk about. Nobody want to want to want to want to be real about these things. The reason why she's gone is because of her goddamn boyfriend. That's the facts. But let me read it. Attorney G General Daniel Cameron, who's a so-called black man, by the way, Daniel Cameron is a black man. So why would you think a black man would want this to happen in regards to, you know, it being unjustified? So obviously we have to, you know, look at the facts. Daniel Cameron is a so-called black man. So he's not, he doesn't have a bias here. It's all based in doing, doing the right thing. Attorney General, General Daniel Cameron detailed his office's investigation into Breonna Taylor's death Wednesday following the Jefferson County grand jury's decision to indict former officer Brett Hankinson on three counts of wanton endangerment. Hankinson was the only officer identified in the investigation indicted with Cameron saying the fired shots that went into a neighborhood's neighbor's apartment, excuse me. As Taylor's case continues to grab the nation's attention, we, we answer your top questions. Did police enter the wrong apartment? No, police did not go to the wrong apartment the night of Breonna Taylor's death. LMPD obtained a search warrant for Taylor's address as part of a drug traffic trafficking investigation. And the reason why that was part of a drug trafficking investigation was because of what took place before that in regards to the, the guy, Jamarcus Russell, in which he was um, utilizing uh, drug trafficking. And he was he um, there was something about a case in which um, there was a homicide on a, on a man named Ferder, Fernandez Bowman. I'm going um, I'm to bring up the uh, the screenshot that I took of it, but I'm, I'm going to show you guys. But it goes back to that. It's all it's all it all goes back to Jamarcus. Um, what's the guy's last name to the guy? Jamarcus. I forgot his last name, but the guy that she was dealing with before she got with um, Kenneth. But let me read up. Let me read on, actually. And the warrant obtained by Watts 11, Taylor's ex-boyfriend, yeah, Jamarcus Glover. And Adrian Walker were listed as the main subjects. The warrant does not list Taylor's name and date of birth along with images of the apartment. Her boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, was not listed on any warrants. Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly, who lied, I mean, excuse me, who led the raid at Taylor's apartment, said that there were a total of five warrants out that night. He told LMPD's PIU his officers did not write the warrant, nor did they do the investigation. Joshua James, the detective who obtained the warrant, believed Glover had been stashing drugs or money at her apartment. No drugs nor money were found. No drugs nor money were found. Maybe because of the fact that it wasn't there and maybe it was in the possession of somebody that knew Jamarcus Glover. You feel me? Being that they they um the warrant was based off of them looking for Jamarcus Glover. You know? Documents show a no-knock order was requested because Glover and Adrian Walker had a history of attempting to destroy evidence, flee police, or compromise detectives with surveillance cameras. Was a no-knock warrant used? According to Attorney General Daniel Cameron, officers did knock and announce themselves the night they executed a search warrant at Taylor's apartment. LMPD obtained a no-knock warrant. However, Cameron said officers both knocked and announced their presence. Cameron said the investigation concluded 
The officers did not after a witness corroborated their story. Kenneth Walker told police he did not hear um, police announce themselves and several neighbors told the New York Times they did not hear police announce themselves. And it's crazy because you have other neighbors who said that they did hear um, the police announce themselves. So maybe it was a case of certain people not hearing and certain people hearing or I don't know. But, you know, when you read, when you read certain um, other articles, it says that certain um, neighbors actually heard the cop announce his name or announce, hey, cops, you feel what I'm saying? Was Breonna Taylor sleeping in bed when she was shot? Kenneth Walker told police he and Taylor were awake in bed watching a movie. So there, right there, the boyfriend is letting you know. The boyfriend is dispelling that narrative that she was asleep. She wasn't asleep. She obviously wasn't asleep. Kenneth Walker told police he and Taylor were awake in bed watching a movie. When they heard a loud knock at the door, he said they then jumped out of bed when they heard more banging. When we come out and get out the bed, walking toward the door, the door, the door light comes off the hinges, so I just let off one shot, Walker said. Still can't see who is it or anything. But why would you even do that? Why would you do that? You putting yourself, and you know, obviously you put your, your lady in danger, you put her in harm's way, and now she's lifeless because of you. People want to focus on the cop. This is all about the boyfriend. It's all because of him. You should have fired that shot. Your lady will still be living today. And this whole thing wouldn't be going on with all this fucking propaganda. I mean, it still would be going on because they tried, They probably took a whole other story and just concocted that and made that a narrative. But this whole Breonna Taylor case, you got to really assess the facts. Did Breonna Taylor deserve to get shot? Of course not. Of course not. Come on, don't be silly. Of course not. But at the end of the day, we have to understand why things happen and hold ourselves accountable. You're a so-called black man, and you got your lady in there. Why would you put yourself in danger by shooting at the cop? And you say some shit like, oh, the door hinges was coming off or some dumb shit. Like, come on, man. Shit is crazy, man. Let me read on, though. Was Breonna telling EMT when she died? You know, I had read up that um, it was told that she had got fired in 2017, so who knows? But it said, it said University of Louisville Health said... Taylor was an emergency room technician at UOFL Health Medical Center East, East at the time of her death. Attorneys for Taylor's estate said she was also working at another hospital as an ER technician and had no plans to become a nurse. Taylor's family said she was an EMT for Louisville Metro be before becoming an ER technician. Watts 11 has a pending request for Taylor's personnel files. Does it really matter at the end of the day? Like what occupation she held? She's gone. You know, she's gone. And it's very, very unfortunate. You know, the so-called black woman is gone. She's a so-called, she was a so-called beautiful black woman who, you know, um, made mistakes like we all do. She didn't deserve to die. But it's fucked up that, you know, you got these people that you deal with, like in her case, in which she was dealing with a, a fucking loser. And this Kenneth Walker and these other dudes she was dealing with. You know, that shit come back to haunt you, man. No disrespect. It's just the truth. The most high judges. Am I saying that she was judged based off of her wrongdoings? Yes, but to a degree, you know, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be it shouldn't have been her fault. At the end of the day, it should be his fault. He the one that should the bro, the boyfriend was the one that, that that basically got shot and killed, man. It's very unfortunate. UOFL Health Board of Director announced a nursing scholarship in Taylor's name. The Breonna Taylor Memorial Scholarship Fund in Nursing will be a four-year renewable away covering full tuition and fees. Was Breonna Taylor a drug dealer or living with a drug dealer? No, she wasn't a drug dealer per se. And I'm going to get to that. No drugs were found at Taylor's apartment the night of her death and there were no drug offenses on her record. Kenneth Walker who is not listed as living at Taylor's residence, does not have any prior drug offenses. Glover, the main target of the investigation, Jamarcus Glover, did not live at the residence. Attorney Sam Aguar, I can't really pronounce that, Aguiar, said Taylor and Glover had dated two years prior to her death and had maintained a passive relationship. Police said they believe he was keeping drugs or money inside her apartment, though court records show neither were found. And the reason why they probably believe it is because it is. Let's go to it. 
So this is a report from 2016 for Breonna Taylor based off of a homicide that took place in regards to um, Jamarcus Glover. So it says here, LMPD homicide unit learned that the vehicle of their most recent victim, Ferdinand Bellman, was found in was a rental and had been rented by Brianna Taylor with an address of 3003 Springfield Drive, number four, Louisville, Kentucky, 40214. At approximately 5.30, Detective Y. Baker and Jay Speaks went to Miss Taylor's address to conduct an interview regarding any knowledge she may have that would be relevant to the homicide investigation. Upon contact with Miss Taylor, Detectives observed a male in the apartment with her, identified as Jamarcus Glover, date of birth, April 5th, 1990. Ms. Taylor stated she did not know the victim and that she found out what had possibly happened from her boyfriend, Jamarcus Glover. Ms. Taylor stated that she had been dating Jamarcus Glover for approximately three to four months and allowed him to drive her rental car. Ms. Taylor provided detectives with a contact phone number of obviously redacted. They're not going to show the number. The same phone number Jamarcus Glover provided on April 14th, 2020, when he called M LMPD's, LMPD's first division to file a complaint for his vehicle being towed, as well as the same phone number that is consistent with the history of jail calls between Jamarcus Glover and Ms. Taylor. So once again, was Miss Taylor or Breonna Taylor a drug dealer? Was she aiding in drug trafficking? We have to ask ourselves these things when we read on, on, on stuff like this. It is important to note that the homicide victim is the brother of Demarius Bauman, which is one of the Jamarcus Glover's associates and has been arrested with Jamarcus Glover numerous times. So it's very unfortunate. This is the result of a woman dealing with fucking cowardly men, dealing with bugged out men dealing with loser ass niggas and at the end of the day some of these females they like that shit that's probably why she was dealing with them because they like that anarchy they like they like that that um that chaotic energy in which you know you got guys that that's on a tough you know they tough guy rah rah i'm a drug dealer i make money i got guns type of shit you know a lot of females they're attracted to that and you, and you see what happens here when you deal with that you know, they try to paint Breonna Taylor as this goody two-shoes. And maybe she was a goody two, two, two-shoes to a degree. I'm not saying that she was perfect, nobody perfect, but maybe she was a woman who had her head on straight and she was doing what she needed to do, but she just got caught up in that fast life when dealing with dudes and they just get enamored by all the, you know, the swag and, oh, he got money, he um he selling drugs. You know, I'm having sex with this dude and he, you know, he putting it on me. That's what goes through the minds of these females when they're dealing with these type of dudes. So they just feel good. It's just a it's just a thrill thing to them. But at the end of the day, when you get caught up in knee deep in that shit, there's no turning back. So it's very unfortunate on our part. But we, we must understand these things as far as learning from them so we won't get caught up in it. And we have to understand the facts and disavow the narrative. Am I saying that Breonna Taylor deserved to, to die once again? Of course not. Of course not. Not at all. But at the same time, we must understand the truth in, re in regards to the reality and the nuance of these cases so we can have a better scope of it. So, um, yeah, man, that's all I wanted to give you all for today. Uh, I apologize for my um, mispronunciation of certain words. And I promise you guys I will enhance the channel in due time. Just, you know, be bear with me and be patient. And I just thank y'all once again. God bless you all. Peace to you all. God bless you all.